Snow fell in thick sheets, it blanketed the countryside turning the world into a silent white expanse. Maya steered her car cautiously along the narrow road, her headlights cutting through the swirling flakes. She was almost there, almost home. But the word home felt strange now, laced with a mixture of anticipation and dread. The old house loomed out of the snowstorm, a dark silhouette against the white. Years had passed since Maya last set foot on the worn stone steps, years since she had breathed in the crisp winter air of her childhood. The house had fallen into disrepair, its paint peeling and windows boarded up. It stood like a forgotten sentinel, guarding secrets buried deep within its walls. Maya stepped inside, her breath catching in her throat. The air was heavy with the scent of dust and dampness, the silence broken only by the creaking of the floorboards beneath her feet. The house felt abandoned, yet there was a palpable energy that lingered in the air, a sense of something left unfinished, something unresolved. She moved through the darkened rooms, her footsteps echoing in the stillness. Each room held a memory, a fragment of her past that had been locked away for years. As the snow continued to fall outside, Maya felt a shiver run down her spine. She was not alone in this house. The furniture was draped in white sheets, ghostly figures in the dim light that filtered through the grimy windows. The air was thick with dust, catching in Maya's throat as she breathed. She ran a hand along a cold marble fireplace mantle, her fingers tracing the outline of a faded family photo. The faces in the picture were obscured by time, their smiles now just faint, yellowed outlines. The silence of the house was almost deafening. Maya could hear the blood pounding in her ears, her own breath sounding strangely loud in the stillness. But beneath the silence, there were other sounds, the whisper of wind through the cracks in the walls, the creaking of the floorboards, a faint scratching from somewhere within the walls. She wandered from room to room, each one a time capsule of her past. The floral wallpaper in the kitchen, now faded and peeling, reminded her of baking with her grandmother. The worn armchair in the living room, its upholstery threadbare, brought back memories of her father reading stories by the fire. As dusk began to settle, casting long shadows across the walls, Maya felt a growing unease. The house was coming alive around her, whispering secrets she couldn't quite grasp. The feeling of being watched intensified as if the shadows themselves were turning to stare at her. A high-pitched shrill pierced the silence, making Maya jump. She whirled around, her heart pounding, searching for the source of the sound. It took her a moment to realize it was the phone. An old rotary phone, covered in dust, sat on a small table in the hallway. The cord was frayed, the receiver yellowed with age. Who would be calling this number? Hesitantly, Maya reached for the receiver. Hello? She said, her voice trembling slightly. The only response was a crackling on the line and the faint echo of her own voice. She was about to hang up when a voice, thin and reedy, whispered on the other end. Maya, it said, the single word sending chills down her spine. Maya froze, her blood turning to ice. She knew that voice even after all these years. It was a voice she had tried to forget, a voice that haunted her dreams. Who is this? She whispered back, her hand tightening around the receiver. But the only response was the dial tone. The phone clattered back onto its cradle, leaving Maya standing in stunned silence. The hair on the back of her neck stood on end, and a wave of dizziness washed over her. Who had called, and how did they know her name? The house seemed to close in around her, the silence now thick with unspoken threats. Determined to find some answers, Maya decided to explore the attic. A narrow, creaking staircase led up to a small, dusty door. She pushed it open, the hinges groaning in protest. The air in the attic was stale and musty, filled with the scent of mothballs and forgotten memories. Cobwebs hung from every corner and dust motes danced in the single beam of light that streamed through a grimy window. Old furniture loomed out of the shadows, a rocking horse with a chipped mane, a steamer trunk plastered with travel stickers from far-off lands, a grandfather clock frozen at half-past eleven. Each object held a story, a whisper of the lives that had unfolded within these walls. 
Maya ran her fingers over the dusty surfaces, feeling a strange connection to the past. As she moved deeper into the attic, she noticed a large wooden chest tucked away in a dark corner. It was ornately carved, its surface etched with intricate designs. The chest was locked, but the keyhole seemed loose, as if it hadn't been opened in decades. Maya's curiosity got the better of her. She found an old hairpin in her purse and after a few moments of fiddling, heard the satisfying click of the lock disengaging. With a deep breath Maya lifted the heavy lid of the chest. Inside nestled amongst yellowed linens and faded photographs was a leather-bound journal. The cover was worn with age, the pages brittle and yellowed. Maya carefully lifted it out, her fingers trembling slightly. She had a feeling this journal held the key to unlocking the secrets of the house. Section 5. A Hidden Journal The journal was filled with elegant flowing handwriting, the ink faded but still legible. As Maya began to read, she felt a shiver run down her spine. The words belonged to her great-grandmother, Amelia, and they painted a chilling portrait of life in the old house. Amelia wrote of strange occurrences, unexplained noises, and a feeling of being constantly watched. She described vivid nightmares, filled with shadowy figures and whispered threats. Maya's heart pounded as she read on, each page deepening the mystery surrounding the house and its past. One entry, dated December 18, 1903, stood out from the rest. Amelia wrote of a terrible argument with her husband, a fight that ended with his sudden disappearance. The authorities had dismissed it as a case of a man abandoning his family, but Amelia was convinced something sinister had occurred. She believed her husband had been taken, snatched away in the dead of night. Maya turned the pages slowly, her mind racing. Could Amelia's husband's disappearance be connected to the strange phone calls and the eerie atmosphere of the house? And who, or what, was responsible for the fear that permeated these walls? Section 6. A Name in the Dark As Maya delved deeper into the journal, she stumbled upon a recurring name, Elias. Amelia's entries spoke of him with a mixture of fear and fascination. He was a local recluse rumored to possess strange powers. Some whispered he was a healer, others a sorcerer. Amelia, desperate to find her missing husband, had sought Elias's help. According to the journal, Elias had warned Amelia about a darkness that clung to the house, a malevolent force that fed on fear and despair. He claimed this entity was responsible for her husband's disappearance and that it wouldn't rest until it claimed the entire family. Amelia wrote of rituals and incantations, desperate attempts to appease the entity and protect her loved ones. But her words grew more frantic, her handwriting more erratic, as if she were losing her grip on reality. The final entry in the journal ended abruptly, mid-sentence, leaving Maya with a sense of dread and a chilling certainty. The entity was real, and it was still present in the house. Section 7, The Storm Rages On Outside, the snowstorm raged on, a furious symphony of wind and swirling flakes. The old house groaned and shuddered under the onslaught, as if straining to contain the secrets within its walls. Maya sat huddled in the attic, Amelia's journal clutched in her hands. The words on the page swam before her eyes, blurring with the tears that welled up unbidden. Fear, cold and sharp, pierced through the layers of her composure. She was no longer simply a woman returning to her childhood home. She was a descendant facing the echoes of a terrifying legacy, a legacy that stretched back generations and threatened to consume her entirely. The wind howled down the chimney sending a flurry of soot into the fireplace. The flames in the hearth which had been providing a meager sense of warmth and comfort flickered and died, plunging the room into darkness. Maya gasped, her heart pounding against her ribs like a trapped bird. The phone downstairs chose that moment to ring again, its shrill cry shattering the silence like a scream. Maya flinched, dropping the journal to the floor. It fell open to Amelia's last entry, the unfinished words a stark reminder of the danger that lurked within the house. Section 8. A Glimmer in the Mirror Maya slowly stood up, her legs trembling beneath her. 
She knew she couldn't ignore the phone. Something compelled her, drew her towards the source of the ringing like a moth to a flame. As she descended the stairs, each step echoing in the silence, she couldn't shake the feeling that she was walking towards her doom. The hallway was dark, illuminated only by the faint glow emanating from the phone. Maya approached cautiously, her breath catching in her throat as she saw a flicker of movement in the old tarnished mirror hanging on the opposite wall. It was just a fleeting glimpse, a shadow within a shadow, but it was enough to send a jolt of terror through her. She paused, her hand hovering over the receiver, her eyes fixed on the mirror. The reflection staring back at her was her own, yet it seemed different somehow. Her eyes were wider, her skin paler, her expression etched with a fear she didn't recognize as her own. The phone rang again, the sound insistent, demanding. Maya tore her gaze away from the mirror and slowly lifted the receiver to her ear. Hello? She breathed, her voice barely a whisper. Section 9 The voice returns. Silence. A thick, heavy silence that seemed to press down on Maya, suffocating her. She could hear the faint crackle of the phone line, the sound amplified in the stillness. Just when she thought about hanging up, convinced it was another prank, the voice returned. Maya, it whispered, the sound raspy and weak, as if coming from across a vast chasm. It was the same voice she had heard before, the voice that seemed to claw its way out from the darkest recesses of her memory, the voice that chilled her to the bone. Who is this? Maya asked, her voice trembling. What do you want? Her words echoed in the silent hallway, bouncing off the bare walls and disappearing into the shadows. The voice on the other end chuckled, a dry, brittle sound that sent chills down her spine. You know who I am, Maya, it rasped. Don't you recognize your own blood? The words hung in the air, heavy with unspoken meaning. Maya's mind raced, trying to process the words to make sense of the impossible. Her own blood? What did it mean? Section 10, Face to Face as the voice on the other end continued to speak, Maya's blood ran cold. It whispered of ancient grudges, of a darkness that had plagued her family for generations, of a debt that could only be repaid in blood. It spoke of Elias, the recluse from Amelia's journal, and of a betrayal that had shattered the family's bond with the land. Suddenly, the phone went dead. Maya stood there for a moment, the receiver still pressed to her ear, her mind reeling from the implications of the conversation. The silence that descended was heavier than before, thick with a palpable sense of dread. She slowly turned away from the phone, her gaze drawn once again to the mirror at the end of the hall. This time there was no mistaking the figure standing behind her. It was a man, his features obscured by the shadows, but his eyes glowed with an eerie, unnatural light. He was tall and gaunt, his clothes ragged and faded as if he had stepped out of another time, and he was smiling, a slow predatory grin that sent shivers down Maya's spine. Section 11, The Haunting Remains Maya gasped, her hand flying to her mouth to stifle a scream. The figure in the mirror took a step closer, its grin widening, its eyes boring into hers with a hunger that chilled her to the core. She wanted to run, to escape the house and the horrors it contained, but her feet felt rooted to the spot. The figure raised its hand, its long, bony fingers reaching out towards her as if to caress her cheek. Maya squeezed her eyes shut, bracing herself for the touch, for the inevitable. But it never came. When she finally dared to open her eyes again, the hallway was empty. The mirror reflected only her own terrified face, illuminated by the faint glow of the snowstorm outside. The phone sat silent on the table, its cord trailing across the floor like a severed artery. Maya stumbled back, her heart pounding against her ribs like a drum. She had escaped, for now. But as she fled the house, the snow falling around her like a shroud, she couldn't shake the feeling that the nightmare had only just begun. The entity was still out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for its moment to strike, and it knew her name.